Okay. Um, welcome, welcome. Um, Kari Anderson with Insight Consulting. Um, I am pleased as punch for you to be joining me today uh, to be able to talk more about how to manage staff remotely. Hello, Monique. Nice to see you. Um, a couple quick housekeeping pieces. And for those of you who have joined me before, you know that I behave a little like a cat with a laser pointer if I see all your smiling faces along the top of my screen or along the side. So I have this Zoom call set up so that I can't see you. And it's not because I don't want to, it's because it's a bad idea for all of us, right? However, I do want to be able to have you participate in the call and participating ends up meaning that you virtually raise your hand in the chat box um, when I ask you guys questions, because there's gonna be a couple I ask. And there's also going to be a portion where I ask you for some specific questions. So um, I absolutely will be able to interact with you. I just, am by design, and not looking at your faces, because otherwise I would just totally distract, and that's just not right. So, um, uh, I get that this is a new norm for some of us, and for some of you on the call, you've had the pleasure or displeasure of working remotely yourself, but all of a sudden we're having to manage a team, right? So here's how today's session is going to go. Um, we are going to talk about, um, let's see how my tech works today. Woo um, understanding what current challenges we may or may not have in terms of teleworking, that's a fancy word for working remotely. We are also going to be able to talk through tips, um, all of which I've used, I've had to, um, to be able to help your teams, whether it's a team of one, um, a team of 10, um, and a team that includes your board of directors in terms of being able to get kind of our new norm handled. So that said, um, there's going to be some of you on the call. I've recognized some names of folks I know, but there's some folks I don't know um, who don't know anything about me. So let me give you kind of the, the deets here. Um, I'm talking to you right now from Tetonia, Idaho. I split time between Coeur d'Alene and Tetonia. Um, I had the pleasure of serving as a nonprofit executive director for 25 years, um, as well as serving as a VP of fund development and director of major gifts. I've worked for seven nonprofits in Washington State and Colorado, and since 2015, I've owned a consulting practice that specifically works with organizations to build nonprofits up from the inside out. So what do I do? I work with boards, I work with staff, um, anything having to do with governance, uh, fundraising, and um, strategy. So um, I have been in the shoes that you're in in terms of managing remotely, managing through um, pandemic, no. All right, so um, there are some pieces that we'll, well, that we'll work through together that I think we all can support each other with. So um, I have to start with a piece that I just want all of you to see because many of your uh, staff are having to handle some of these pieces, um, specifically if you're in development, but all of these um, absolutely should be resonating um, through your entire organization right now. Um, and these will all be top of mind, especially when you are working remotely, right? So um, we have to take care of ourselves first. Um, you as a manager, and, and oftentimes I'm going to also flip word and say you as a leader need to be managing these things for yourself and for your staff, right? So first thing, self-care. Um, what are we doing to make sure leading by example you and then your teams have taken care of mind, body, soul during this time. And I'll, I'll give you some tips as to, as to what to be able to do as we get a little further onto this. The second piece, especially for those of you that are executive directors um, or have anything having to do with our donors, then we need to reach out to our donors to make sure that their health, their safety, their security um, has been tended to, right? We're like a shepherd during this time. We're not making asks when we're making those welfare checks, right? We're just calling to check in on our people because if we do those things, then we can actually take care of our organization. And that means, especially when we're working remotely, um, our spirit and our morale, um, and then we are actually able to move to net revenues, right? Which impact our paychecks, our ability to pay rent, right? All the things that help to run an organization. So here's a chance for you guys to exercise that virtual raising of the hand. And you guys might meet my black cat, Ralphs here in a second. He evidently has joined the work party. He's on my desk. So uh, you might meet him in a second. Hey buddy, come here. Let's just say hi to everyone. 
Everyone, Ralphs. All right. So um, how many of you have never worked remotely before? Please raise your hand. Ding, ding, ding. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, good. Um, how many of you have never had to lead or manage from afar? Raise your hand. Oh, yes. All of us had a bag of chips, right? Okay. Um, how many of you had no transition period going into this? Right. Like all of a sudden, we're closed, go home, right? And how many of you are currently dealing with what I would call sketchy tech? Uh, yes, right? Um, sketchy tech sometimes in the rural West means mm, there's one internet provider and we all happen to be on it right now, right? So um, bandwidth is slim and that's if we're just a sole proprietor working from home with no teenage kids playing games, right? Um, never mind if you're having to share a computer um, and, and you don't have all of your software at home. So this is, I'm gonna give you a couple stats that I read that were fairly interesting. Um, so I think we all know that working from home has been a, just a, a trend probably since the early 2000s. Um, we used to think of it as being a pretty sexy thing to do. Hey, you know, my boss is lenient enough or we can work from home. Well, that's great for a lot of us. I mean, I've home office since 2015. Um, I had a remote office when I worked for a university because oftentimes I would be on the road and I would need to work with clients. That's one thing if it's a, hey, this is an added perk. It's another thing if, oh, this is the deal and we're having to do it without any sort of warning or without any sort of training, right? Or going through expectations. Um, the other piece that's just so different about this is you're having to do this. This wasn't a choice, right? And so when we're having to, when we're being forced to do something, even though it is for absolutely the right reason, it feels like we have a loss of control, right? So that's part of the other issue and just the whole isolation piece, right? So here's what we're gonna go through today. Um, just to address um, some of the common challenges we have when we work remotely. Um, and then we're gonna get to the solutions, right? So the first thing, it's lack of FaceTime. The second big piece of, uh, in our three buckets is how we communicate or the full meltdown of it. And the third piece is, as you saw by my cat, right? Um, the distractions that sometimes wander into our lives. So let's talk about these a little further. Um, so this is a biggie, right? The lack of FaceTime. Um, I don't care how much or how little you like your fellow employees, right? Um, or your volunteers or your board members or whoever comes into your office. Um, this whole, hey, I'm only seeing myself in the mirror if you live alone, or I'm seeing far too much of my family, um, or not enough of those we care about. Um, it is just, uh, it's, Mm, disconnecting, disconcerting at best, right? We're social creatures as humans, and we are so programmed to being able to be with people, even if it's just a favorite person. So us having to be apart is, is a challenge, especially for extroverts, right? We've, I think we've seen all these memes going around the internet of, I'm an introvert and I have been preparing for this my whole life. Well, yes, and. Right. So for how long? Um, part of the, uh, the issue when it comes to lack of FaceTime is it's really hard to track um, productivity. It's also really hard to track moods. Right. So think about this if we're in an office. Um, yeah, you can kind of scan and see what people are doing. You also can read body language and just kind of get a general check in as to how the vibe is that day. And that's really hard if we can't see each other. You can also read reactions to things, right? If there's a challenge, if there's a discussion that was heightened, um, it's difficult to do when you can't check in. And um, the whole lack of FaceTime piece, when we are not together, um, it's amplified, right? It's amplified by stress because we don't know when our current situation is going to change. And because of uh, everything that is being learned about our current virus, right? Um, there, may be, there may well be work changes that extend long after the social distancing has ended, right? So just the whole unknown piece is really difficult. And when you can't see each other just as a calming mechanism, that's hard, right? So challenge two, eh, communication, right? So 
This is what I have seen with clients of mine just over the last mm, two weeks or so, right? So um, yes, we have all this wonderful technology that would have made it really, frankly, impossible to work at home probably 20 years ago if we didn't have it. And the challenges, right? Um, when you're still at home, people still can be just as unresponsive to email and texts as they are at the office, right? Um, because of the fact that you may have people working at home that have challenging cell coverage. And if that's their only communication modality, that's a challenge, right? Um, because we're getting this just deluge of information on email, uh, whether it's from um, trusted providers like the Idaho Nonprofit Association or maybe it's local news channel or the CDC or whatever it is, right? There's a deluge and we just are in full overload as to what that looks like. Um, and then here's the other piece that goes along with it. In fact, it just happened with a client of mine before I got on this. So people who are normally warm and effusive to you in person, um, it changes in email. Right? Even sometimes the best and most thoughtful, thoughtfully crafted emails can come across as being brusque or abrasive or um, things that certainly wouldn't have been intonated if you're talking live and in person. And so it's up to us as managers, and I think it's certainly up to us right now as leaders, to be able to model what effective communication looks like, right? Just so that we don't end up having um, additional hurt feelings or rumor or innuendo or anything else that doesn't need to be there in terms of challenges right now, right? And you've already met one of the buddies here, right? So now we have these other distractions, right? So my my dudes are always a distraction for me whenever I'm home. So Tyson is the fabulously handsome Teddy on the left and Ralph's is the young pup on the right. He turns one next week. Um, so we yeah, all right, maybe you have 17 dogs at home and some goats and you know some cattle you gotta take care of. Maybe there's kids. You all of a sudden have a roommate, spouse, partner. And then I've been seeing wonderful posts about, I'm finally gonna get my kitchen painted. Man, I'm gonna gut the garage. I'm gonna learn how to macrame. Whatever that might be, yeah, we gotta do this stuff. But if we're fortunate enough to still have a job, we have work that we need to get done. And so we have to be able to figure out a way to pivot and be able, oops, mm -hmm, there's my tech again, um, uh, to be able to handle um, taking care of our head right? Which is where pets and kids and partner and projects is really important. But we also have to be able to actually do some work, right? So um, I am curious what other distractions might be um, moving from that, hey, this is a welcome distraction to mm, this is becoming a problem. If you have any of those that you would like to share, hit them, hit me with them in the um, the Q and A piece because we can talk through it at the end of this as to how we might be able to address the distraction. So let's move on to some tips, right? So um, I'm gonna uh, read you the list and then I've got a slide for each as to how we're gonna address those. So uh, in no particular order, right? But actually the most important one is first, it's, um, it's check-ins with staff and then we'll talk about how to do that. Um, the need to over-communicate technology, managing expectations, um, the difference between outcomes and activity. Okay, that's a biggie. Um, flexibility, uh, the need right now for empathy, uh, the ability to organize, the importance of trust, patience, and staff appreciation. So let's get to the most important one every day. And this is, I, I, I know two of you do on the call right now, whose heads are probably gonna spin right now with this, right? So um, this is a big deal. So if you've got a team of one, this is gonna be easier for you. If you have a team of 30, hmm, all of a sudden your day has gotten a little different, right? Um, the whole face to face piece, cannot be understated right now. So if you don't yet have a piece of technology that's allowing you to do this, 
we need to work on that for you, right? Zoom, I know, has discounted its platform 20% for nonprofits right now. There's GoToMeeting, there's FaceTime, there's Skype, there's Google Hangouts. Um, there are so many ways to be able to do this, but the importance of actually seeing someone to be able to say, Monique, how are you doing? Evan, how are you doing, right? So you can actually see, that's a big deal. I'm asking you to do this every day for a bit, right? It won't need to be every day as you and your team have defined um, what your expectations are and what your new normal is. But the importance of being able to see someone to really check in as to um, not only like just mentally, right, how, how are things going, but also just to get a status check as to where things are. We need structure as humans in order to be able to move us forward. Some of my artsy friends just, they just love to tell me, Car, I don't need structure. I'm, I'm, I'm a creative. I don't need this. No, structure gives you freedom. And structure is really important in times where we are unsettled to be able to actually feel like you're moving a progression forward right? Um, these do not need to be one hour meetings. These can be 15 seconds um, with your you know, savvy folks, right? Um, but you can set a timer, right? It's maybe five minutes for each and, and be able to get through them. Um, oh, okay. So I'm going into my questions right now. Everyone, Karen Baker now gets my superhero cape for the day because she has been in TechSoup. If you purchase Zoom in TechSoup, it is half price. Karen, I will send you like a virtual superhero Kate. Thank you. Um, and Annie, you've got a question that I will hit at the end. It's a great one. And some of your peers may have some um, a, a, a answers as well. Um, the question was, how do you deal with staff members? It's truly technology challenge with phone calls and specific emails um, be sufficient? Yes. And right. So um, we'll get to that in a bit. Thank you for that question. Okay. Um, next piece, right. Um, over communicate like lots right? Um, uh, think back to when um, you are most anxious, right? Some of us are one on the anxious meter and some of us are like, oh, 10 plus, right? A lot of the anxious is because we don't know, right? So to be able to communicate, even if it's, so this came up this week and we're having to figure out a new protocol just for your staff to know that, hey, you don't have all the answers either and you're working towards a solution, it's better than just not hearing from anyone, right, at all about this. So this isn't about micromanaging. This is just about communicating with your team, right? And if you think about this, a lot of us work, um, when we're back in our offices, you have open workspaces, and so you're always kind of able, whether you should or shouldn't, right? You hear conversations, or there's you know water cooler chat, or while you're getting a cup of coffee, there's just always some buzz that's going on and so we're missing that right now. So the importance of being able to communicate is really important. It doesn't mean that you guys are doing so much communicating that you can't get your work done. So it might just be, I know I've got a, a, a group right now in Seattle, they have um, a Zoom check-in with the entire team at the beginning of the day and they have a Zoom check-in at the end, right? Just for, just to see how folks have done on specific, um, projects or outcomes that were for that day. It does not matter to me what you do. What matters is that you as a group talk about this so that people feel like they're supported and they have a methodology to be able to know what is going on in their business since they can't be in the office with each other. Okay. Ah, the tech, right? So again, if we would have had more than oh, 17 seconds to clear the building, and get home, ideally what we would be able to have for people who are working at home is a laptop, right, or a desktop that has a webcam um, that you would end up having um, reliable internet. And again, man, that's tricky in some of the places that we work in. Um, and that we would have a video call platform and that we are helping folks figure out, well, what does dedicated workspace look like from home? Right. So I think this is actually a really good conversation for you to have with each of your staff that you have, you know, hopefully you have still that you haven't had to lay off or furlough. If we have 
a modality to have them be working on, you know, at home, then it's our job as managers to make sure they have the tools to be able to do the work. And so just a frank conversation with them as to what um, they need and being able to do some brainstorming as to how to get that. Um, we may have to do some settling, right? And that's okay. Um, ah, Monique, you had a great question. Guidelines with communicating, i.e. if one employee texted another at 3 a.m. about work. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's a no, right? Um, one of the things, yeah, it's funny, I'm doing a session, I think for all y'all, I think it's Friday on self-care, right? So that'd be a hard no without COVID. There's no texting at 3 a.m. about work, right? How is that a work-life balance in there? Um, and again, people are stressed. So this is a really important thing to be able to talk about expectations and to, tech, uh, to talk about boundaries, right? And I've got a couple more little tips for you guys as we move forward. Um, uh, I'll relate a, a quick story to you. So I got a, mm, we were on vacation about three weeks ago, it feels like three years ago. and we were abroad and so obviously we have a, a time zone thing, right? Our phone starts going off at 1.30 in the morning about some stuff, right, at home and I didn't sleep the rest of the night. So it's gonna be a similar thing for your team, right? Like literally something needs to be burning uh, in order for us to be alerting team members at three o'clock in the morning, but this is a great time to be able to talk about that, right? Like what would constitute something that we need to get someone out of bed for um, and, uh, and the impact of that, right? So it's, it's a conversation piece. Okay, so managing expectations. Um, I think, this needs to be said a couple times, right, with team, and this is the importance of being able to have everyone on a call um, when we're talking through this, is that we're going to have things that can get done remotely, and we're going to have some things that can't get done, right? One of the challenges that so many of us in this sector are having right now is if you deliver on, you know, if you have programs that are part of your mission, um, you may not have figured out a way to be able to deliver those remotely or virtually. Um, some nonprofits have been able to pivot and do that. They're still trying to figure it out, right? Virtual tours of a museum or kids programming that goes from being in person to you know, deliver via Facebook, right? Sometimes there's solutions for it and sometimes there's not. But the biggie is that we need to um, be able to make very clear lists, right, in terms of tasks or projects and be able to define the scope of work um, deadlines, because we're still working, right? Um, and deliverables, right? So how this ends up looking like is um, you sitting with each of your team members, and this could be overarching as a group, deciding what's important that we have to get done in the next week or two weeks or month, um, and then talking with each um, team member about what they're going to do and having realistic expectations, recognizing that we just don't work the same at home, especially if there are other distractions going on. And sometimes, right, um, I'll, I'll get feedback from people saying, well, I work on myself, I should be able to get lots of this done, but my head is not in the space, right? So we have to be able to recognize that just because you might not have uh, childcare issues at home or roommates or spouses, that working from home, if you are just an extreme extrovert and are dealing with isolation issues, that's hard. So expectations are really important because that gives people something to, fo that, that to focus on, right? And at the end of the day, remember, we still have jobs. We still have performance standards. There's still work that has to get done. So taking those performance standards out, right, our objectives, and being able to go through them to say, these are the areas we're going to focus on now, um, it gives your staff some sort of sense of control and an area to focus in, right? So with regard to outcomes, not activity. So uh, I'll, I'll tell a story on me for a second. When I was a young um, executive director um, and really hadn't been given a lot of tools yet with regard to how to manage and how to lead. Um, 
was in the 90s. So some of you on the call were younger. Um, it was kind of a, a big thing, right, um, for us to be at our desks, right? Because if you're at your desk, then you were productive. And I think we all know that's not necessarily the case, right? So the big deal right now, it's what's the outcome? And because recognizing that you're going to have some of your staff at home that literally may have a two hour window to get work done between homeschooling kids and making sure their partner has bandwidth on their laptop to be able to do their job and cooking, right? And all the other things that go along, trying to get some sleep. So being really clear about outcomes, right? What's the thing that we need to be driving for and not being so worried about, oh my heavens, are they able to be online for eight hours today? Um, for some of us that are a little type A and a little controlling, um, that's difficult. This is a great time for you as a manager to be able to learn a new habit, right? It's all about the outcome, not necessarily the activity because everyone has different reading speeds, right? Everyone has different focus abilities. So let's focus on the outcome. That certainly will help some of your, some of your staff along. So, um, this kind of goes hand in hand, right? We have to be flexible with ourselves right now, right? We also have to be flexible with the staff that we manage. So again, over communicating, stating the tasks and the reasons why these tasks are important now um, and, and those scopes. So um, I, th I think about strategic plans that hopefully most of you have. Um, those were written in um, our not current reality. It doesn't mean those goals and objectives and strategies and tactics and metrics are important. It probably is high time to pull those out to say what of these items do we actually need to be focusing on right now or are there different items in order to keep our business doors open in order to still be delivering on mission should we be a little more nimble with? Right? And again, we have to over communicate those so that our entire team is on the same page. Um, and just know that, hey, this may not quite work out the way that we have written it. And that's all right, right? Um, I think this goes without saying, but I have to, I have to put it here in that um, we just got to be able to walk a mile in, in our neighbor's shoes right now, right? Um, many of us have, um, relatives, right? Parents, um, aunts and uncles, grandparents that we haven't been able to see. I have a client in Sheridan, Wyoming. They just had a new grandbaby born and they can't go and see the new little dude because again, right, that been in the hospital and all the things and have to keep everyone safe. Um, we just have to know that everyone is carrying a burden right now. Um, if you've not read up on uh, the importance of emotional intelligence, this might be something you choose to do during this time. And, and just the, the reminder that basic human decency is, is something that just cannot be overrated right now. Um, we have to exercise it differently when working remotely because again, you're not there to read the person, right? You're not there to see their eyes widen a little bit or um, watch how their shoulders stiffen or um, hear the sarcasm, right, in an email. Um, we, we have to be present and we just have to practice empathy and not assuming that there's someone else's agenda. We have to assume instead that people are tired, right? They um, might be a little scared. Um, they're tired of looking for toilet paper. Um, so um, we need to practice kindness. Um, the other piece that goes along with this and managers, this is your job, right? So in addition to making sure that our people have the tools that they need in order to do the work, um, we need to be able to organize the work right now. So uh, I know that many of you have had events that have either been canceled or postponed. Uh, maybe you work in a youth athletics organization where you have had to cancel all of your spring programming. Um, maybe you work in a school system and a graduation is not going to be happening. Um, so your month of April um, or part of March has been totally appended. It is your job now to be able to make some decisions about what we're working on, 
what system or systems are we working in, whether it's a donor database or whether it's um, online communications or how we're tracking some of our information. Um, everything ought to be metrics driven. So again, it's by uh, something that's objective and not subjective. There should be common objectives that you and your team are working towards. Um, for some organizations right now, it literally is all staff calling donors, and it's not to ask for money, it's just calling donors to check in with them, right? Um, there should be some team objectives, and there's also personal objectives, so that when you are um, actually coming back together as a team live, whenever that is, because that will happen eventually, you'll know how you've been able to move a certain part of the, of the work forward um, and how that's going to fit into your larger plan, right? Um, there are so many ways to be able to organize work. Um, some of you might use Slack, some of you might use Basecamp, it, it, some of you just might use Google Drive or Dropbox. All of those are great. Um, but figure out a way for you to be organized so that everyone has access to the data that you need and everyone knows what piece they're playing in order to move this forward, right? So th this next little piece, right, in terms of uh, a tip, right, something to be able to work towards, this is tricky if it hasn't been developed at the office, right? The whole do they trust you? Has there been trust, a culture of trust built at your business? And if it hasn't, well, guess what? You get to develop it now. Um, if it has, it's your job to be able to foster it, right? So this is one of my favorite, favorite quotes, right? And it really is about integrity. We're going to meet folks where they're at. If they're having a rotten day, they're having a rotten day. If they're having a great day, let's figure out why, right? And, and spread that around to the rest of your team. Um, we have to build trust. And it's actually more important when we're working remotely for the manager to be able to spend some significant time in how we do that. Um, part of the trust piece ends up being that we have to be able to be humble and we have to have some humor in this. Um, to be able to share with your team where you've had a goof or a blunder and how you've been able to get through it and when you've had a success so that they feel like they can share a success. It is probably, uh, in addition to making sure that your people have the technology to get work done, you helping to build and maintain trust with your team remotely, especially during a heightened time of chaos, is going to be one of your hallmarks, right, as a manager and as a leader. And here's the other little nugget that goes along with it. So we have to be patient. Um, and here's how patience looks sometimes, again, to a type A person. If there's a deadline that has been called out and people are struggling to hit it, I tend to get a little cranky um, until I remember to walk back into empathy to say, hey, this is going to be harder to get done because of lack of resources, right? Um, I've got a, a client right now who's struggling to meet a deadline because they don't have access to um, the library in order to get on foundation search. They can't finish all of their grant research um, because they don't have access. Um, and then we just heard yesterday that the library is offering that link for anyone outside of the library. So hooray, right? Um, we need to be patient with each other. And the best way for us not to get irritated with each other is by telling each other where we're having an issue so that we can work through whatever it is. Um, know that we quite possibly won't be as productive and know that quite possibly we will be, right? It will depend on the type of work you're doing and um, the resources you have. I think it's also really important for you to be able to talk with the team as a whole um, and your individual staff members as to um, how this is personally affecting them and how it either heightens or diminishes from how they work, right? If we've actually talked through that with them, we can help them get to solution in terms of how they could be their most productive during a trying time. And probably the last and hopefully not uh, least is we need to be appreciative of our staff. 
So it's easy to be appreciative when we get to see them live and in person, right? Um, when I was an ED, I used to bring coffee from Starbucks once a month to my staff members and that got expensive for me, right? But it was an important thing for me to do. They, they all knew they got to put in their special order. And, you know, once a month at that particular staff meeting, everyone, you know, got coffee on me. Um, we can remember birthdays, right? And anniversaries and, and celebrate when someone's made all their um, planned giving calls, right? Or has registered everyone for summer camp or finished a really particularly gnarly Excel report. Um, that becomes more difficult when we are working remotely and we can't shake someone's hand or give them a hug or give them a coffee or do something you know fun and silly in the office. Um, what I have seen people doing, um, they'll have a theme um, for their particular call during the week and everyone shows up with the most ridiculous hat they have, right? Or they'll show up in costume or they'll, uh, they'll come as a character from their favorite movie, right? Um, we can do things that are silly that help to build culture. And there are things that we can still do as managers to be able to appreciate the work that our team is doing and to be able to recognize them, not only in, you know, personally and one-on-one -on, -one on your calls, but also as a team. It's a great way also to engage your board um, in reaching out to team members that maybe board members don't normally have um, interactions with to be able to recognize the work that they're doing. So here's something as we kind of wrap this up and I get ready for some additional questions from you that I want you to think about. Um, yes, how many times today have you heard this too shall pass? Um, we, we know this well. When? Not, not exactly sure, right? But we know this well. This is the piece that I think is really important that you as managers also track, right? So you're going to have some learnings um, watching people work remotely and watching how your business runs remotely that I think are absolutely applicable when this passes you are going to have some key learnings about what people need, like what people on your team need in order to be high functioning employees. Um, you're going to discover some work practices that perchance were archaic in your brick and mortar building that you don't have to do anymore. You managed to do just fine without these things. In my estimation, some of the learnings we're doing now by having to go through this quick, rip the band-aid, 17 seconds, let's get home and work, right? As we settle into this, I actually think that you're going to find some things that can be um, put into place at your office when you go back that potentially can streamline operations for you and save you some money. Um, I don't know what all those are yet. I've started to keep a list from some clients as to, hey, so I would have never thought that this would have worked better, but it is, right? Oftentimes what this looks like is, flexible work schedules so that parents can be home more with kids. Again, right, if the outcome is being handled, might this be an employer retention tool? Maybe, maybe not, right? Um, but I want you to keep a list, right? Because of all of the chaos that goes on, there are going to be some learnings in terms of how we build culture, how we build trust, how we're organized, how we stay on task, how we can deliver on mission, perhaps differently. And I think that's a value for us, especially when we're having to work through crisis. So um, before we get to um, the end, right? So we're at about, hey, I'm like 10 minutes ahead of schedule. So that's great. I've got lots of time for questions. Um, I want to um, handle a couple. Uh, there's a question from a participant that says, how does one deal with staff members that's truly techno technologically challenged? Would phone calls and specific emails be sufficient? And I said, yes, and, right? So certainly phone calls are great and you can't see them, right? Um, specific emails are, um, could be sufficient. That's fine. Um, what I absolutely know is that this is the time for us to be training up our teams. Um, and it has no bearing, um, you know, it has no, you know, no matter to me, um, where the person lives, um, 
you know, sex of the staff person, age of the staff person. Um, this is our role as a manager to make sure that we are training our staff on the tools that we need to be able to run our business. And so um, this might be a training opportunity for that staff person because here's what I know is not going to go away. We're going to have to be using tech like this more often in our workspaces. Um, and there is no substitute for being able to see someone's face. So it might be a hybrid of that, right? That you can um, agree to, we're going to do phone calls and specific emails, but we are also going to work on training for our staff to make sure that they feel comfortable um, or at least more comfortable using technology. So I'm going to open it up for some additional questions before we um, wrap this thing up today. And the, and the last piece while I'm waiting for any questions that you have is this. So this was specifically on managing remote staff because right now I kind of feel like we're just all still trying to figure this out, right? Um, I will be sending you all in about 30 days via email um, some information on how we lead remotely. Um, some of you might be the executive directors, um, some of you might be um, put into that role. We're going to have to lead out of this, right? So there's going to be some pieces that you as a manager always need to do, but we are going to be expected to lead out of this, and I will be sending you all some information on, and, on, and some tips as to how to do that. Gene, yes, the slide deck is available. Evan will be sending you this glorious webinar um, and a PDF of the slide deck uh, uh, right after this is done today. What other questions might you have about um, communicating with staff, uh, purchasing tech at cost, dealing with uh, folks that would rather not be on technology. Ah, any tips for dealing personally and outwardly with staff that are in panic mode? Um, it's hard, right? Um, what I would say, um, the, the biggest, um, the biggest reminder for all of us is our job is to be able to stay calm even if we don't feel like we're calm, right? Someone said the other day, hey, we got to fake this till we make this too, right? Yes. So the best possible thing that I could give you for advice, uh, thinking through when I've had to work with staff that react like this, uh, um, is to be able to have a conversation with them privately about what is causing the panic, right? And be able to have them pause long enough to be able to list out for you what are the things that are making them have a full meltdown. And there's lots, right? It could be health, it could be job security, it could be money, it could be workflow, right? It, rather than us trying to come up with a solution for them, they, we need to create a space for them to be able to talk with us about what it is. And then um, we were able to get to a solution with them. Um, the if, if the panic you know continues, um, then we're going to have to step in to be able to help mitigate some of that risk. But don't try to solve it all for them until we until you know what exactly are the panic pieces. And my guess is there's probably a solution for all of them. Not all the solutions are going to taste great, but there's going to be a solution. Um, so I would, go, I would go first with please have them share with you um, what those items are, and then you can work on solutions together. And some of those solutions might just be, hey, we're putting that in the box, and we can't deal with that right now until we've done with these, you know, these three pieces first. And Jen, you can hit me offline with some additional specifics, or, and I can help you work through that. Um, ah, what are your thoughts about having daily calls with team members to gauge workload? Yes, yes, and yes, like yesterday, right? Um, and again, they can be five minutes, right? Beginning of the day and end of the day, but this is your time to not only support that staff person, but also have an accountability call, right? Like we have, and I know you know them, they're in your office. They might even be in your household. We have some folks that really do not deal well with this type of work structure. No bearing on them as a person, no bearing on them um, as a professional. And so our job is to be able to help create a structure for them so that they can do their best to thrive. So checking calls, absolutely. I think that's great. Ah, check specific. Um, yes. Uh, so the question is, this may be too tech specific, but I thought I'd ask. We are implementing Slack, one channel for our board, one channel for key staff. 
Um, any pro tips about how to set this up quickly? Um, uh, well, I can tell you what I what I've not done successfully. That's a whole other webinar for another day, Lisa. What I would say is um, the biggest the biggest thing is just to set it up right. So for those of you who haven't used Slack before, Slack and there are a couple other tools, Basecamp is one of them as well, that allow you to keep all conversations in one area, right? Instead of having to sort through 17,000 emails on a particular topic, everything's there. Um, and shoot, if I would have thought about it, I probably just should have had my Slack uh, account up so I could show you guys around in it. Um, and I'm happy to do that offline if that's helpful for anyone. The deal is, right, whenever you get an email or a document from a person on a particular subject, it shows up in Slack. And so then you can type in, oh, board minutes, and anything that comes up with regard to board minutes is right there. So you don't have to search for it, but it keeps your inbox a lot clearer and it allows you to be able to search for things and, and and keep on track of specific projects or initiatives much easier than having to like you know use 17 different platforms um, I'm sure the folks at slack would love my uh, interpretation of their product it's great um, and, I, and I know that I could be using it um, in a more sophisticated manner than I am at least I would just say uh, start right and, and and you'll be able to refine it and again I'm happy to talk offline more about that with you um, okay Ah, there we go. Yes, Alexandria, hello. Um, so great advice, right? The biggest thing you have to do is figure out how to manage all the notifications and shut them off, right? True that. So like Facebook, right? Like Instagram, it can ping, 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 ping. So just shut them off, right? Um, how I operate at my home office is how I used to operate in a, in a you know, live and in-person office. I had to program myself where I am just checking email, right? Like certain times during the day. Otherwise you can rabbit hole and then all of a sudden you're in la la land and not getting anything done. So yes, I would say less notifications more. Otherwise it's like a cat with a laser pointer. So um, yes. And, and that's what Alexandria just said. If you don't adjust your settings, you'll get an email or a ping every time someone chirps in and um, that's not necessarily great for focus. Ah, yes, and there's Evan, right? Um, so at, they love Slack. They started using Slack at INC um, uh, uh, several years ago, and then it was kind of like a stutter start, and now they love it, right? So Evan is Evan's your pro tip, right, in terms of using it um, maybe for the first time. So that's great. Ah, how do you get the 20% Zoom discount? Um, from what I have seen, you literally go on to Zoom, and when you're signing up for the account, um, it will ask you whether you're a nonprofit organization. Um, at least the ads that I'm seeing, that's what it's saying. And um, if you struggle finding that, let me know and I will find it for you because that has the founder of Zoom was just on national news again last week, um, letting folks know that that was the least they could do is to help um, organizations with this. And there's also, um, there's also a, uh, oh shoot, I want to say that there's a free version of the platform as well if you're not having to do webinars or if you just want to do meetings. So there are some um, certainly more cost effective um, price points on the platform. Okay. Yay. Yay. Okay, good. So Alexandria loves Slack. Oh, but they are smart, right? So never mind getting on a Zoom call with your silly hats, right? They actually set up a channel, right? So when we're talking about Slack and channels, so a channel basically is like a subject, right? So you could have a Slack channel for board. You could have a Slack channel for HR, right? You could have a Slack channel for summer camp. They have a Slack channel for sharing silly and uplifting things. So that's fun. I like that. Okay. Um, any other questions before I tell you how you can find me for more stuff here? Okay. So for those of you who know me or have been on my calls before, um, you know how to find me. Um, for those of you who are new, this is where you can find me. Um, if you go onto my website, you will find a link, and I'm hoping that this is a helpful um, lifeline for you in normal times, never mind, you know, kind of in our, our COVID times. Every Monday, I save the day for what I call nonprofit therapy calls. So you can book a half an hour slot with me. It's free, it will always be free, and talk about anything, right? So we can talk about this stuff, we can talk about other challenges or exciting opportunities that you have going on, um, how to you know, 
you name it, right? I've had calls for how to negotiate a raise, how to fire a board member, how to put together a strategic plan, how to tweak a fund development plan, you name it, you can talk about it. Cone of silence, right? The call doesn't go anywhere, um, but you might have some things from today's call that you want to be able to talk through, and I am happy to be a conduit for you. As I mentioned, I will be sending you in about 30 days some ideas and tips as to how to lead remotely, because right now I think we're kind of just in the flailing around stage. Um, especially for those of you who said, oh, I've got 17 hot seconds to get out of the building. Um, by then, we will have maybe figured out what's next for us, right, as a sector and as a country. And you're going to be expected to lead. And so I'd like to make sure that I'm there helping you as we figure out um, how to continue to add value and to be productive in this sector. So um, I'm appreciative of y'all being here with me today. I'm going to sign off. And uh, I know I've got a couple more of these uh, later this week. Um, I have one on Friday on self-care. And I think I've got um, another, oh heck, Evan will send the link. I've got another, I think, um, in betwixt now and then. So thanks again for the work you guys do in the sector. I'm a huge fan and I will look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a great afternoon. Take care.